Okay guys, I'm in the shop here and uh, got a little bit of an issue. I actually got it working now, but um, this is the old um, bench top uh, belt drive uh, table saw that I use for cutting a uh, dado on the back side of the face frame. Like you see here, this accepts the uh, side panels in the tops and bottoms. And uh, I used to have it drive driven by a um, a Belder 15H VFD and a uh, three-phase um, 145T frame motor. I believe it's a two-horse. And I was getting an error um, on the display here. I obviously don't have it plugged in, but uh, it was reading over voltage and doing a little bit of research. Uh, there's a couple things you need to check, but it's not actually performing the way it's supposed to. I went through the parameters and set everything back to default, and it worked up until now, so it's worked for the last uh, four or five years, uh, so there is an issue. So, in the meantime, because I need to get a kitchen done, um, I've had to modify and change some things. Um, first of all is I had to go back to a single-phase motor. So this is a one-horsepower uh, single-phase motor. 1725 RPM, just like that one there. That one's also 1725. Uh, but like I said, single phase. Um, pull the arrangements exact same way. My uh, belt tensioner. Um, but anyways, um, the one thing I wanted to check to make sure is I wasn't pulling too many amps. I knew that one horsepower was really uh, kind of tight for it. Um, but it got even tighter because... This power feed I originally had on that shaper for running styles and rails, and when it was sold to me, it was advertised at 16 feet per minute. Well, 16 feet per minute is actually at 50 hertz frequency, not 60. Um, so at 60 hertz frequency, it runs at 20. So I really needed the lower RPM on the style and rail shaper, and originally I was just going to take the um, slow speed gear set from Grizzly, which I had actually put into that power feed, because that one also used to run at 20 feet per minute. And I got a different gear set for Grizzly, and um, unfortunately it won't fit in here because of the casting. So I just resulted in putting this power feed on the um, Dado table saw. Well, in doing that, I've gained a few extra amps on the load here, but just to show you, uh, let's see here. It idles about 4.9, and I'll run a piece through in a little bit, but um, it'll jump up to about 9. The motor's only good for uh, 6.5, but um, it'll work because it's, I'm running short sticks through there. And the uh, overload in this switch is not size for the motor, but the motor does have its own thermal cutout switch. So, um, and I have tested it. It works. So, um, it'll be fine for this, but this is something I need to readdress. I'm going to have the drive looked at. If there's something wrong with the drive, depending on what the cost is, I may just toss the drive. Um, like I said, it works fine up until you're done putting a load on it, then it'll go into a high DC bus voltage. Um, I am fairly fluent in understanding the uh, variable frequency drives. However, uh, this one's kind of throwing me for a loop, so... This one actually has a story behind it that I don't want to get into right now, but long story short, it's actually an 18H vector, not a 15H, um, like it says here. But the um, reason being is that cover was kind of crappy, and I just put the cover over on the exhaust fan setups, uh, VFDs over there. But anyways, the one thing I wanted to show you guys as well, um, I'll start up here again. But if you notice when I stopped it last time, I also heard like a big growl. Watch the uh, ammeter here as well. Here we go. Okay, zero amps. We went up to 1.0 amps. That is the capacitor discharge uh, bleeding back through the start windings. Uh, what's causing this is there's a charge buildup in the capacitor. Uh, this one here I think is a start capacitor. And What's happening is, is as the motor spins down, the 
there is a centrifugal switch in the front of the motor here behind this end bell. And that switch opens and closes by a centrifugal force. And that switch controls when this start capacitor is in sequence. And this is a farm duty motor. Uh, it's a one horse, so this is a capacitor start. And uh, basically what it does is the capacitor helps give it some extra torque uh, under a heavy load to get it going. Once it's getting close up to speed, that centrifugal switch will uh, disengage the start capacitor and it'll go into its run mode, which is a separate uh, run winding. So when the motor slows down, that switch kicks back and there's a built up charge in this capacitor. So that charge is actually feeding back. What I don't know is, you know, the amp meter read um, one amp and then it went down to zero. I don't actually know if there's actually current or voltage actually bleeding off back actually in through the um, through the disconnect here. You know, if I were to take, I don't have time to do it right now, I just want to quickly touch base on this whole setup here. But if I were to take my uh, probes and check for 220, so I'd have one probe on one leg and one on the other leg, and held them on there while I was coasting down it and it, and it uh, did that, if I'd actually get a, a voltage display on here. I'm curious what it is, but I don't really have time to do that right now. I just wanted to bring up the speed that um, we got problems in the shop. So anyways, um, and I'll show you it running here and what this actually does. This is actually, uh, how well can you see that? That's actually a dado head. Uh, it's an insert dado. It uses, uh, I think, 14 millimeter inserts on the outside and then uses some, uh, I don't even know what the inserts are. I got this on a local tooling auction, but uh, it works very well. It cuts a very clean dado. It cuts across the grain very well. It's an extremely uh, smooth cutting dado. So, Here's a piece of scrap. I will uh, start it up. We'll look at the starting amps or the inrush current. Oops. Okay. Here we go. Maybe not. Let's try that again here. There we go. Okay. We'll let it coast down. Oh, 1.1 amps that time. Okay, let's try that again here. Alright, so we're hovering on 4.9 amps just running that dado. And I'm going to take this piece here. And let's watch the atmosphere. Oops. Gotta watch to see what I'm doing, but this is the data it cuts. Focus. Well, anyways, so. So let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Yeah, well, anyways, you get the point. Uh, it's just a, it looks like a typical data. This one's about seven sixteenths wide, uh, which works out very well for what it is that we're doing. So. Anyways, so yeah, got this up and running again. That's good because I uh, need to have this kitchen 100% complete by April 1st. I know April 1st is April Fool's, but it ain't no joke, unfortunately. So, all right, well, I'm going to put this, cover this all up, and uh, start running some pieces. So, thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.